Hey mates, it's good to see ya. I'm really excited about today's video because I'm gonna make a dress for a wedding. And wedding guest dresses are kind of not in my field of expertise. So once again, I'm throwing myself in the deep end and we're going to learn together and figure this out on the go. Let's get into it. I have already done the most grueling part of this task, which is sticky taping and cutting out my pattern pieces. I am making this pattern from Vicky Sews today. It is called the Nunzia dress. It's kind of a close fitting dress made out of like a slightly stretchy material and it's totally out of my comfort zone. So I'm excited to learn. I did something pretty questionable, which is I bought two different fabrics with the intent of patchworking them together. And that's not necessarily questionable for me because I love patchworking, but where it becomes a little dicey is that I only have the exact amount of material that I need plus like 10 centimeters. So I've got about 1.2 meters of each of these fabrics and I need literally that amount. So I'm scared. So I'm just following the Vicky Sews pattern for this dress minus the patchworking. So if you want to sew along with me, hit up Vicky Sews either on their website or on Etsy and you can download this pattern printed at home and all you need is the fabric and interfacing and thread and I think that's it. And the pattern, of course. So what I'm going to do now is just lay out all of my pattern pieces and kind of start to formulate where I think the patchwork should go. I think I want it to be more fluid, like not rigid triangles and squares. I think you want it to be curved patchwork, but I'm just gonna have a look at this and figure out what's possible. I just lay out my fabrics and I definitely have more of the deep maroon, so I'm gonna cut the majority of it out of that and the minority out of this. Hopefully we can make this work. I literally can't be bothered to like do a proper sketch of this, but the concept is this pattern piece for the left side sits underneath this pattern piece for the right side and they kind of like overlap one another. And so the concept is two different colors and have this color go straight into the skirt. So it kind of just like flows. Shout out to all of my friends and loved ones who are also cutting out their fabric like little gremlins on the floor. Yesterday when I cut out my pattern, I just lifted it up against my waist so I could see how long the skirt fell on me and I think I just want to add a few inches. So I've draped it against some butcher's paper and what I'm going to do is just add probably two or three inches of like seam allowance at the bottom of the skirt and that's just going to elongate it. Sorry, I just have to really quickly interrupt this sewing tutorial because I have to show you what just arrived. We have been waiting so excitedly for t-shirts and transfers to arrive because I'm doing my first ever line of t-shirts and I can't even. I'm wearing the t-shirt and the transfer just arrived. Oh my gosh! Hey guys, it's Editing Carly, and I just wanted to say that the t-shirts that I was talking about then have been printed. We did them all, we shot them, and they're going live on my website this Friday, May the 12th at 6 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So that is very exciting. And let's get back to the video. T-shirts arriving just literally gave me such a big brain blast. So I was gonna start cutting out my skirt on a fold and then I realized it's gonna be so much easier if I double up the pattern and then cut out where I want the patchwork to go before cutting into my fabric. So right now I'm just gonna draw over this skirt some random swirly design that I like and cut that in half, mentally adding seam allowance for my fabric and then I'm gonna cut the fabric. 
There wasn't really a rhyme or reason to the way I did this patchwork design, but after I cut out each individual pattern piece, I made sure to label them according to the color that they would be, just so I didn't get any confusion between the colors. I'm feeling like a little bit of a mad scientist right now, but I'm cutting out my patchwork pieces and to add seam allowance, I've just actually taken my magnetic seam allowance guide, which you're meant to snap onto your sewing machine. And I'm just snapping it onto the outside of my scissors so that when I cut, I will have one centimeter seam allowance between the paper and my scissors. I've cut out the front part of my skirt which is cool, but I'm just going to try and sew it together to make sure that it works first before cutting out the rest of the skirt. Also, I'm working with a double knit Ponte de Roma. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but basically it's really thick. It's got a bit of stretch and on the inside, it's got this kind of almost fleecy vibe to it. But yeah, it feels luxe and it doesn't fray. So I don't think I'm gonna overlock my edges. I'm just gonna press them out. Love that for me. So I did actually purchase four overlocking spools for this, so that was a little bit of a waste. sneaky and did my first practice seam on my own just because I needed to know if it even works and it does. Now I'm just going to really carefully pin together my patchwork pieces. It can be really weird trying to patchwork curvy seams but as long as you're patient and you line up both edges of the seam you should be fine. It just feels a little bit weird. Because the material I was working with had stretch to it, I made sure to pin on both sides of whatever I was working on so that if I needed to pull and stretch a little bit as I was sewing, it would still all line up evenly at the end of the sewing process. Then of course I just made sure to press out my seam as I was doing with everything and then press it from the top side over as well just to make sure everything was laying nice and clean and flat. Hey crew, it's day two of this. I am going to start constructing the top. I decided I'm not gonna cut out all the pattern pieces until the top is done and maybe even the sleeves so that I can just keep the patchworking like flowing. That doesn't really make sense, but it's just how it works in my brain. So the first thing I have to do is cut out interfacing and interface this top. So let's do that. They're meant to be one and a half centimeters wide and as long as the shoulders plus one centimeter at the top. I was pretty eager to work with this stretch interfacing because it was something very new for me. And I just made sure to give it a little practice go on some scrap fabric before putting it straight onto my project. Just to make sure it worked and it did. Yeah. Always test things on scrap fabric. I'm not sure if you can tell, but Golden Hour is absolutely popping off right now. I feel so tentative about every single step of this process because it's new and scary. That's okay. That's okay. Well, apparently that just worked, so that's awesome. This is stretch into this is stretch fusible interfacing. Like it's stretchy. Cool. Then I labeled where the darts had to go on the bodice with a piece of chalk and a ruler, and I sewed them into the bodice pieces. This pattern actually says when stitching the darts to only backstitch at the shoulder seam and then just leave the tails of the thread at the inner point of the dart, like not backstitched, and then tie them together and just hand sew them into the dart. That's kind of revolutionary because the backstitching at the corner of the dart sometimes looks a little clunky. Kind of cool. I didn't fully document this part of the process, but basically I just continued to follow the steps that were telling me about constructing the bodice. One of the things that I spent a lot of time constructing was the cutout detail at the front. 
And this is what I was doing in this clip here. I just did a tiny bit of sewing between two notches and then I started flipping over the seam allowance for the rest of the bodice pieces so that I could get ready to baste stitch them in place. Now I just have to baste stitch by hand all of this down. So I'm going to put like a TV show on and do that. Back in the day, I would have just tried to hack this and do it as quickly as possible, but I'm starting to learn that taking my time and actually trying to construct things really well makes pieces look more polished and expensive in the long run, which I think is totally worth it. So I did do all of the basting by hand, and then I started constructing the rest of this front bodice piece by pop stitching those seams down and then removing the basting stitches after. At this stage, I had to then cut out my back pieces, which I hadn't even gotten up to yet. So I tried to accurately pencil in where the front color pieces met the back color pieces so that the rust would beat the rust and the maroon would meet the maroon, if that makes sense. And then I repeated all of my pattern cutting process, adding seam allowance for where I was going to be doing the patchworking. And then I patchworked the back bodice pieces together. I feel like the lighting gets a bit scary in here after dark, but I'm doing my best. Um, we're persisting. I've just patchworked my back piece. I really hope this fits. It It's looking really small, but I'm gonna, now that I've patchworked it, just continue on with the instructions. I'm still at that stage where I'm, I'm nervous. I'm gonna put the interfacing on now. If you're not patchworking in this process, I would recommend doing all your interfacing right at the beginning and then you're good to go. But because I was kind of figuring out my colour placement as I was going, I just cut my pattern pieces out as I worked my way down the garment to make sure that the colours were all moving organically and how I wanted them to. Anyway, then I got to constructing my bodice properly. So I sewed the side seams and the shoulder seams right sides together in between the appropriate notches. Press the seam flat and then press the seam. Allowance is open, open. Even though my fabric didn't fray, I think I still in hindsight would like to have overlocked all of my seams just to add a little bit more stitch security and a little bit more structural integrity to the garment, but you live and you learn. Anyway, I got to top stitching that shoulder seam down and I swapped colour threads so that they matched the maroon and the rust, like a very fancy sewist. And then I started pinning down my collar. I've just got up to the part of the instructions where it says to base the neckline by hand and it doesn't tell you if you need to top stitch it or what. So I think I'm just going to try and do like as much of an invisible stitch as possible and call it a day with a neckline. Yeah. Okay, my hair is a little disheveled from trying this on and off, but I think it's going well. I'm just going to put the pleat in on the right shoulder. I think it goes right there. And then I've got to do side seams of the shirt and then we can move on to the skirt, I think. I'm having the feeling, guys. I just tried it on and it actually fits and it looks good. Uh, the feeling being, it, it's working. <laughs> Hooray. Oh, I'm gonna do sleeves and skirt and then we're done. Yeah, baby. So I haven't cut out my back skirt yet because the back skirt needs to match the patchworking on the front skirt, but it also needs to match the back of the bodice. And it needs to look good, so I'm. I have to figure that out now. And I'm gonna trace on the pattern where the color block hits, so that way I know where the color needs to be coming from on the other side of the skirt. I'm just gonna check also where the color is coming from with the bodice here. Ooh, Okay, it's working. It's... 
I think I figured out how the colors need to be. So I'm going to do what I've been doing this whole time. I'm going to cut the pattern up. I'm going to add the seam allowance where I'm going to be attaching the two colors together. And then I'll have my other skirt panel. I'll meet you back when it's time to attach them. Patchworked both skirt pieces. Next step is just to sew them together at the side seam. When you are putting your patchwork pieces together, it's so important that you make sure that the colors are aligning almost as perfectly as possible. I spend a lot of time at this process and pin a lot because if they are not matched, it kind of takes away from that beautiful illusion that the color just swirls throughout the garment. Place the bodice and skirt right sides together along the waistline. Match the side seams and the notches. Pin, stitch on the other. Here I am putting my bodice piece right sides together with my skirt and spending a lot of extra time just making sure that those colors do align. I did struggle with this quite a bit, but after unpicking and giving it another go a few times, I did get as close as possible to getting this alignment the way I wanted it to be. This is where we're at. The skirt's on. I'm liking it. It's got this cool flow to it which I'm excited about but I am absolutely exhausted so it's time for bed. See you tomorrow. <laughs> For the sleeves, I didn't do too much patchworking because it didn't really need to be overdone. So I just patchworked my tiny little bit that I had on one of my sleeves and then I got to constructing the sleeves themselves, which just meant pinning them down the side seam and then sewing that side seam down. Sleeves are going in. We're getting there. I know I've been saying that for the last couple of steps, but we actually are, in fact, getting there. I think this make you could do easily in a single day, but if you're making your own fabrication like me, it may take a bit longer. In saying that, I totally encourage you to have a play with your own fabrication, patchworking, color blocking ideas, because it really adds this whole new element of personalization. And you simply can't get things like this at the store. It's pretty dang exciting. Pattern tells you everything that you need to know, but it's so good to use it as a jumping point and see where you can take the pattern from that place, whether you play with different colors or different textiles or you patchwork together. I really do think it can just add a completely new vibe to the project. I carefully stitched my sleeves into the bodice piece and that kind of marked the end of construction for this project. Yay! I think it's basically done. It's so exciting. Just put the sleeves in and all I need to do now is hem them, which I'm going to do a blind stitch by hand and also hem the bottom of the dress and that's going to be blind stitch too. For your knowledge, I added about five centimeters of length to the arm and I think it was about 15 centimeters of length to the hem. Now that I've tried it on and I can see where it's falling, I'm gonna cut off probably about three inches off the bottom of the hem. So I probably could have extended it by about seven or eight centimeters. Anyway, I'm gonna start doing these hand stitches, then it's gonna be done, and then I can show you what it looks like. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here so much. If you enjoyed this video or if you love sewing content, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to be friends. And as always, let me know what you're working on in the comments. I love hearing about all of your works in progress. It's pretty exciting. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye.